one second. Okay, now we just gotta, gotta get this little setup going over here. What's up, guys? Um, day two, what's up? Um, we are. I'm gonna paint some stuff. I'm actually gonna paint something. I haven't haven't uh, painted for a while on live stream, so I feel like I've been neglecting everything. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do some more weathering on this bad boy. <laughs> Yo. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll go ahead and, uh, we'll go do that. I was literally just watching your paint prep video on YouTube. Ha! Ah, yes. Morning. Uh-oh. It's, uh, it's still nighttime here. I think it's only like 10. Oh, it's 11 o'clock. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm at, we'll go until, uh, my battery just on my phone just decides to cut out, which I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how far we get with that. But good evening, you guys. Um, so I did a little quick uh, spray paint, not spray paint, but spray weathering tutorial thingy earlier, a little tip kind of thing. Um, it's all dried. So I'm going to go ahead and add a bit more uh, actual weathering to this thing before, um, before I call it good and put in a visor and everything. So this is just kind of what it looks like now. Um, this whole top part I sprayed with the uh, weathering in my spray bottle earlier, and then I knocked a whole lot of the top part down on either side. So it left this nice kind of untouched band of goo and gunk in there. So it kind of looked a little bit better. I liked it. Uh, this is, it's got a little bit more on here than you can see in the camera. So yeah, it is no big deal. We're not going to focus on that stuff anyway. All right. Uh, I got stuff everywhere. So where to start? Where to start with this thing? Um, something that I didn't put on the video I posted earlier, another tool that I think everybody should have uh, in their painting kit, believe it or not, is... Magic eraser. Um, <laughs> it seems super weird, but uh, these things are absolute a necessity when it comes to painting, especially with acrylic on this type of stuff. Um, it is exactly as advertised. It's a magic eraser. Uh, so this one has like the blue spongy part on there. Um, I haven't used these ones yet. I don't really use the blue spongy part at all. I just used the, the plain white ones. Um, so this will actually take the weathering off your helmet. So if you've gone too far, you have magic eraser. If you've gone too far with your, uh, your let's say your, your black washes or uh, whatever it may be, um, really all you need is, is to get a damp one of these guys and just go over and you will get rid of, of the stuff without having to sand it down or or use a abrasive pads or anything like this. That'll this will take it off. Um, for instance, there's a bit of weathering up here that I didn't really. I mean, it's not bad, but I wanted to clean this up a little bit. So we're just gonna take this bad boy in a paper towel. Yep, got, got paper towel. All right. Oh, boom, look, gonzo. So that was all dried paint, all dried paint. It's all acrylic, but it was dry. It's been dry for hours. And now I have a nice clean spot and it looks a lot more like the rest of this, which is which I really, really liked. And I did the same thing on the front panel here. So a lot of this was all gunky, um, gunky and more dark weathered in here and on the sides, but I took the magic eraser and I just cleaned a strip all the way down right in the center. So it gave it a little bit more um, focal point here. So the color on this really comes out. So magic erasers are definitely a need in your painting kit. Just, just saying. 
Um, so same thing over here. We got a bunch of grime and, and crud all up in here. I want to kind of lighten that up a bit. So grime. No grime. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there we go. So yeah, so if you fear not, if you over weather something, if you're not quite sure, uh, if you've gone too far, get one of these and you go right back to square one for the most part, um, depending on uh, how heavy you, you layered that stuff on there. This has got three layers of that super light mist spray that I did earlier. And I really like to spray again because it gives you this really natural uh, gradient. So you have all these natural drippy marks and stuff that's that's really what I'm looking for for these types of helmets. Because this is what I'm going to do is uh, I call them relics. So this is going to be another one of the relics um, that goes up on the wall. So what I am going to do because it's a relic, we're going to give it a little bit more rust. So I'm going to do some of these rust, uh, chunky rust and uh, blotchy patches. Um, add some in the vents, more in the vents here on either side just to give it the look like it's it's been you know water or something's been running out of there for a while so it's got a little bit more rust build up and because gravity we're going to bring it down and down this way so we down this way and then travel it this way so that way it looks like it was you know been dripped on same thing like what we have here going on the little drippies here and some drippies down here this thing's just drippy. My favorite part, actually, is all this stuff back here. I really like that stuff. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to play around with. A lot of people have asked how I do this little rusty, chunky patches, and that's what I'm going to kind of show here, so that way hopefully I can answer some of those questions. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm going to be doing. Try to get all my brushes here. So I have a few brushes. So I have this nubby, chunky one. I have this one that's kind of almost like pinstriping or doing fine lines, which is good for riding in these cracks and crevices to really get in um, those recess points without getting too much paint on either side of anything. Uh, when this gets wet, it thins out really, really nice. I have a really small, like tight, um, tight brush here and then a little bit long. So basically same thing here, just a little bit longer. So just to kind of get in these places, kind of like in here, we use them to get in there and, you know, little recesses there and really kind of crud this thing up. So I'm never careful. The only care times I'm careful with brushes is with this one and uh, that one ish. The really, really long, fine one. So as you can see, get it, it goes zoop. And it's magic, so you don't want to mess these ones up. But these are really, really handy for a lot of situations on this weathering stuff. Um, maybe y'all can see this. I can't really tell. There we go. I might be a little better. Oh, there we go. Okay. Enough dilly dally. So get out my. So we we know about their magic eraser. Goody goodies. Um, I'm gonna get my rust which <laughs> you can tell uh, I will use every bit of paint that is in this thing. I don't know, can you see how tightly bound these, uh, oops, I'm gonna throw it on the ground first. <laughs> I've squished down this, this metal tube so much. I, I'm gonna get every bit of this out because I love it. Uh, it's kind of like this nice, rusty, transparent, uh, earthy brown, but like rust color, which I really, really love. Um, and since there's not much of it left, what I'll do is I'll just wet my brush and kind of whittle it around in there. There we go. Yeah. And for doing the chunky rust, um, you know, you can have pictures of reference up if you want to. I just try to imagine what you know, the edges and, and all this stuff is going to look like after it's been sitting out for long enough. So you just kind of blah, 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 blah. And take your finger 
and just kind of mash it in back into the helmet. And then dab, 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 blot, 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 dab, 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 blot, blot, and so on and so forth. And you can kind of just finger paint it in. And the more you do, the more it builds up these little rusty patches and it kind of gives it a little bit more of a natural natural feel to it. And you want to kind of, don't want to make it even across the whole thing, and break it up a bit and just do a little at a time. So I think we would have more coming down like right in here. And I, I tend to do a lot of little finger painting. Let's see if I can get a light in there better. Oops, there we go. And where this, this line here for the natural um, gravity fed drip for when we were spraying, I'm just gonna accent that a little bit more by dragging the paint down with my finger. And that'll give that black bit just a little bit more um, red tone to it so it looks more like the rust was traveling instead of just so much of black. So same thing, a little bit more rust. And this is why my hands are always super, super dirty because I paint with my fingers quite a bit. <laughs> uh, that's what we're doing. I think it's just nights or days. I don't know. I mean, what is it? Uh, Eleven thirty. So I might have a lot of uh, UK and stuff on right now. Everybody else is in bed, like I should be. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Huh? Got nothing else to do. Should be painting stuff. If you're not, should be in there painting stuff. I almost feel like I should have some sort of music in the background. So I'm not 100% boring. And although you can't really see it on camera, uh, filling in these, I filled in these with black, just a flat black um, paint that I use for my washes and everything, which is this is just a black ceramic coat. Uh, it's cheap, it's like a dollar something for that model. So, and it works really well. Dries really, really matte, uh, matte black, so it helps uh, make these recesses look way, way, way better, way darker, way deeper. I weathered my Black Series Mandalorian helmet yesterday. Oh, oh man, I need to do that to mine uh, so badly. Um, I did that silver, or I painted the clear coat on there which turned it into a mirror chrome, just like Adam Savage said it would, which su surprised me a lot. Uh, and I have to tone it down so much. It is so reflective, it's ridiculous. Um, so I gotta get on that. I'm new into the helmet prop game. I've admired your work a while now. Hope to keep learning from you. Ah, uh, what's up, Wu-Tang? Um, I, I'm glad that anybody's, oops, I knocked my camera and everything. I'm glad anybody's learning anything. Like, I just thought that everything that I do was was common knowledge. Um, I don't know if it's just because I come from more of a painting background, that all the little tips and tricks that I use, uh, a lot of painters use just in on a general basis. I didn't know that not everybody knew that. So when I post things like the spray bottle earlier today, I didn't think I was gonna get that big of a, a response from it, but it was kind of immediately overwhelming in a good way, in a really good way. So I'm glad that I'm able to share stuff that that uh, otherwise were like little unknown secrets, I guess. And I, I'll do this if, uh, if it, if the drag or drop that I put looks too heavy, I will always just dab it with my finger 
because it knocks it down, but it pushes it into the paint so that it still dries really nice and kind of uh, tones it down a little bit more. It's showing up really dark in the camera, but I promise you it's not, not that dark. And same thing, like I said before, that we'll be dragging this down this way because the rust will follow gravity. So just kind of move this back and forth. A little circular motion to kind of blend it in a little bit. Just drag that down. Yeah, that's looking gross. <laughs> when I was watching Adam's video towards the end, I was like, whether your helmets don't go out there wearing your clean best car. <laughs> yeah. Um, Adam, I, I love Adam Savage to death. I really do. Uh, he gets a lot of uh, the Mandalorians mixed up like Boba Fett style armor and stuff like that. He was just all calling, uh, or, or he was calling them, I don't know if I remember what he was calling them, Gen 1s or something like that. But he was also calling Shore Troopers Mandalorians the other day, um, which is honest mistake. But I do think things should be dirty and, and, and whatnot. But there are clean Mandos. There are, you know. he Especially in the episode where he got his armor freshly made it's not it's not dirty yet so it is definitely a uh, definitely canon <laughs> that's a piece of art dude ah thanks what up pufferfish oh man pufferfish helped me out uh, not that long ago with a kind of a design mental block that i was having with a backplate of mine for my um my uh island fet kit that I have my little green kit. I have got a brand new back plate and it was just too green, just too green. Um, so I had to, I wanted to break it up and put some sort of design or something on there, but I couldn't for the life of me figure out what to do. So I hit up Pufferfish and he kind of helped me out a little bit with that. And I, I really, really thank him for that. Thank you, man. I watched his recent incog incognito Iron Man suit. Yeah. I love when he does the incognito stuff. I really wish more people would come out to Hawaii um, that are like, you know, that, that that are like that. But, you know, we kind of get stuck with smaller cons and stuff. And I know it's expensive to come out here and whatnot. So I understand that. Yo, out you alpha ignition, the name is Fives Bounty Hunter Element. Some of our top favorite makers and painters opinions on their oh oh wow you lumped me in with those guys uh, that's that's a huge compliment to me um alpha is amazing uh the name is fives she's amazing as well she's really fun um she's really really nice um uh samoyla samoyla Vart is definitely killing the game too they're all those are all great great makers i really i really like all their work um so yeah, I would, yeah, that's my opinion. I really love all their stuff. I wish I had something from each of them. Uh, I repainted one of Alpha's helmets for him not that long ago, and uh, now it's sitting on his shelf at home, and I'm super honored that that he let me do that for him. So I was excited. His recent Darth Revan mask is absolutely amazing. I think he did Darth Revan. It is Darth Revan, right? I, I believe so. So yeah, I, those all those makers are absolutely amazing. Um, even uh, what I really like is YouTubers um, that do uh, cosplay stuff, um, like Vault Fox. Vault Fox does a, a lot of really cool things, she, and she's funny. She makes cosplay life seem a little bit brighter, uh, if that's a thing. And with the relic style helmets that I've been doing, these are really, I mean, not necessarily meant to wear out and like at a con or something, unless you do a whole kit like that. But they're definitely more like, I had the the idea in my head after going to Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities that that's what I wanted to turn an entire room into. I wanted an entire room that simulated Doc Ondar's. 
and I felt like all the stuff that he had in there was like relic pieces where they were you know, old and um, they had some sort of value to them there because they were just just epic pieces left and right and I wanted to do that so I decided that I was going to do a whole selection of helmets super dirty like they had been found out in out in the wild um, and kind of just call it my relic wall and these knight helmets or these uh, these clone knights I should say by Alpha and um, and Jake Bartok and uh, Alter are kind of like a, I've got so many of these now because they're just so fun to paint and they look so cool it's almost like tank trooper esque but knights of the round table at the same time I love it Wu-Tang it's 2 a.m. I have to work in the morning. Love your work. Thank you. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. You scrolled up there. Uh, love your work. Thank you for taking the time to share your work and tips and tricks. Thank you, man. Thank you, Wu-Tang. Stop by anytime. If you ever have any questions, just ask. Vault Fox is really good as well. I need to learn how to use EVA foam. I love Bounty Hunter Helmet Boba Fett and Pyre version. I love the name is Fives Rex. Yes. Um... Not sure if your wife will agree to dress up as a Thorian shopkeep, but it's worth a try. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Uh, looks for oh pufferfish. Looking forward to seeing what you do with that back plate. You should make an old relic style Darth Nihilus. Yes, I should. As soon as I find somebody to make one for me, perhaps broken in two. I have a uh, the uh, I oh crap I forgot the guy's name, but there's a guy who is doing um, lightsaber. Uh, hilt builds they're mashups of lord of the rings and uh, star wars and he did one that is also from jake bartok's um kind of art style who did design these helmets originally and i ordered one so that is on the way so i'm going to have a uh lightsaber hilt um, that is going to match these guys that's going to go on the wall and i'm going to break it up and everything just like uh the Shards of Narsil, I think is what it's called, um, from Lord of the Rings. So we're going to do that. Jake Bartok, yep. <laughs> so definitely, definitely going to do that. Uh, so I, doing a mask like that with Nihilus would be absolutely fun. I would love to paint all this stuff all the time. Unfortunately, my normal job, I got to do that takes a lot of my time. And I don't have a 3D printer, so I gotta buy stuff and ha and wait for shipping. And unfortunately, being in Hawaii is uh, the the shipping times kind of sometimes are way longer than manufacturing times by far. Uh, that's awesome. Saw a guy in Etsy selling a nihilist mask that looked like it was made out of a bone. Ooh, with all the texture on it. That sounds neat. That sounds really cool. Ah, uh, see, we gotta get some of this undercut in here. Have you been tempted to do some of the Lord of the Rings helmets? Always, always. Let's see, does Elotur lightsaber hilt and Thor hammer lightsabers? Yes, yes he does. Oh, so does this person. Oh, okay, at M Mystery. I'll have to check them out. DM, uh, I'm gonna forget that by the end of this, so DM me there. Their stuff, I'll check them out for sure. Um, I am always tempted to do all things, all things. I I really like painting uh, sci-fi and medieval fantasy style stuff. So Lord of the Rings is right up there in my alley. Um, and I love Lord of the Rings as well. I'm one of those people that kind of likes all the things. <laughs> so it's really hard to pick. Like, I have so much random stuff in my collection that I keep wanting to add more things to it, but I'm having a super hard time trying to find a balance in how to showcase these things. Because that's that becomes the problem. You have a bunch of Star Wars stuff, and then you have all these random other things that kind of don't match up. And it's really hard. To, it's like I need a room for each uh, genre, which I wouldn't mind, but I would need a way bigger house. Still adding that crunchy. And after I do this red, 
um, this rusty stuff. Sometimes I'll go back in to darken up some of the rusty spots and add a little bit of black. And that helps sell the, the corroded, uh, dark, chunky um, spots like, like the stuff that I have in here. Adding a little bit more black into these crevices will help uh, break up the red and add a little bit more realism to the uh, rust effect. So definitely going to have to do that. Hopefully the video quality is coming in. It's a little stormy, a little rainy outside. Sometimes the internet doesn't like to work. So hopefully you guys can deal with that if, if it's getting bad. Try to go. Thanks for letting us all hang out with you. Yeah, pufferfish, stop by anytime, man. I love it. Uh, if you uh, see any cool uh, helmets or, or things you might want to like send my way that I think are interesting, DM me. Send them, send them to me, man. I would appreciate that. Have a good night, my friend. Oh, look at those dirty fingers. God. <laughs> All right. And this is this is supposed to be uh, a version of the Star Core, the three hundred twenty seventh, I believe, is the is the proper number for these guys, the Star Core um, on Felucia. I think it's Felucia. Uh, yeah, I, th I think I'm saying that right. So Odd Vikings, watching Odd Vikings build actually inspired me to do this. So when I hit him up asking him to uh, what color um, he uses for his for his kit um, so that I could get an accurate color for the stripe up here, um, he actually let me know that his color wasn't right and he was going to repaint his kit so me and him actually sat and went back and forth on a bunch of different colors and i did grid work and and took photos from the movie screenshots and art and all this color swatches from all over the place and we actually found the correct um color choice once we agreed on on the uh color choices i was able to lay down a bunch of test um, test paints and we, me and him kind of went back and forth to figure out which one was the best and now that we have that then it's a lot easier to do some of these guys <laughs> it's more because because their yellow is not really a yellow it's kind of like an ochre it's a bit of brown um a bit more brown than brownish greenish like olive olivey greenish brown than than yellow and a lot of people try to get that get those if you use the yellow or that orangey confused with Cody, and that's not what we want. So I'm glad he was he was able to help me out with that. And that's what this all this is about. It's all about helping, helping each other out, sharing knowledge, doing things. I don't like I don't I don't hide any any of my knowledge as far as if I get some little tips and tricks that I know, I'm definitely sharing them. I'm not one of those people that believes that you should hide, hide all that stuff under lock and key. All right, I think so. I did that. I didn't do it on this side, so we'll go get that undercut on that side. Again, so I'm just swirling this stuff around. I can't believe this. I've had this little little like tube of this color paint for probably at least ten years. At least, I think I think it's been about ten years. Um, this burnt umber, and I that's right. So burnt umber two two two, uh, from Dale Rowney or Dale Rowney, I guess it's just with cheap, cheap paint from the art the art store, <laughs> and it's lasted me that long. And then my old black bottle lasted me about the same amount of time too. So that's I, this stuff goes a long way. And sometimes people use the, the water-based oils to do their weathering, and that's awesome, and it works great. I just don't have the patience for it. <laughs> Might this technique be where you have paint stuck on your nails? Yes. Yeah. Um, so if I'm not painting helmets or painting on canvas, um, I'm, I'm using my hands. I finger paint a lot, whether it be on helmets or canvas or whatever it is, I'm doing it with my hands. Uh, I don't wear gloves for pretty much anything other than my other job. So 
that's why I'm always covered in paint. I try not to, but it happens. I'm not the most careful person when it comes to <laughs> getting dirty. I feel like if you're getting dirty, you're doing it right. There we go. Yeah, that's starting to look better. It's a little bit more rusty, a little bit more uh, grungy. I like that grungy. I'm just trying to find where I might want to add a little bit more. So probably, no, probably down in here. We might add a little bit more because there's that the drips that come down here. So I might want to add a bit of tint along this rim just to give it that little effect like it has been getting down there and getting gross and grimy. Because you don't want to have a bunch of runningness to nut to clean. That's not going to work. I find that trying to think of light sources and gravity while you're doing your weathering is going to help immensely to look fluid and realistic. Because if you're just going against the grain and you're just putting stuff all over the place that has no kind of rhyme or reason, um, a lot of times it almost looks just forced. And that's, I mean, it's fine. No problem with it. It just looks forced sometimes. So always take into consideration gravity, where how things uh, work. So if like you step in a puddle and stuff splatters up, you want to have the splatter pattern kind of off one side, little bits here and there. You don't want it all, all over evenly spread throughout the helmet because then it just, or your, your kit, and then just looks forced and we don't want that. That's looking, that's looking pretty, pretty grimy. Let's go switch over to the black. I'm gonna rinse that paintbrush out. Yeah. We'll switch over to the black and we get, get some of the extra little dark spots in there. It looks really dark in camera. I just looking over in the camera and it looks really dark, but it is not that dark, I promise. Okay, which brush do I wanna use? We'll go ahead and stick with this one. I'll bring this guy a little closer. There we go. So, and this is how I paint pretty much with everything. I'll just leave it in the cap because that way you're not wasting paint. You're not pouring paint out that you don't need. And you can just dip it and then wipe the excess off on the lid because you want to basically dry brush this stuff on or, or dab it on, really. And if you're doing a whole bunch of heavy black blotches or red blotches, it's going to... You're wasting paint and it's gonna get a little a little too gunky. That apparently is my new word of the night. Gunky. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Uh, you can also use a paper towel if your fingers can't get in the little grooves, just kinda move that paint back and forth. Yeah, it's looking better. Okay. Add some these cracks and crevices a little bit more. Pinky can just about get in there. Use this one. There we go. And then also remember <laughs> these areas as well. You don't want to add all this really, really nice uh, rust and detail and then have these really clear untouched patches because that just wouldn't work. That's just not gonna work, it's gonna look weird. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a wash to the back side of this, just to kind of even it out. Don't have to go heavy on it or anything, just even it out just a little bit. Dab some of this stuff in here and blot it off with your finger because that's what we do. Finger painting with, with Island. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely helping. Um, I'll take pictures of this later on and, and maybe post them up and stuff just so you can see the actual detail because I feel like you're not going to see that on this video. If anybody cares to, I'll do that. I definitely can't get my finger in that crack, so... There we go. Yeah. 
And this, the, so this red, this burnt umber, actually has a bit of uh, an oil kind of look to it. So it has a bit of a shine. So the black is very, very matte, but the red has a tiny bit of a shine. I don't know if you can see it up in here. It still has a little bit of a sheen to it. So it's not, it's it's not gonna let you down in, in photos and whatnot, so. I don't know if that makes sense. Sometimes I just start talking in circles, sorry guys. What do you use to make the scratches? Which scratches? There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of scratches on these things. Um, so there's a different, two different methods really. You can do all kinds of things to make scratches on these things, but um, so we'll do a for instance. So all these little indentations uh, where the darker colors are coming through and some of these little, like these little things and where there's missing paint and all that stuff, that's all done with balls of wadded up blue tape. Um, and I kind of go over that. I have a, I have a YouTube uh, and a, uh, IGTV channel that actually walks you through that whole process if you want to check that out. But the other scratches, all these like cuts um, here and here and all this stuff and these little these little gashes and, and chunks taken out, um, that's with my fingernails. <laughs> that's it. Um, so while the paint is still wet, or, or I shouldn't say wet, but... Uh, I, I, after I paint it, I wait a few seconds, like maybe like 20 to 30 seconds because this paint dries really fast. And I'll take my nail and I'll just kind of feel where it touches into the paint and I'll just depress a little bit and slash over. And that is what creates these scratches. Pretty much every long drawn out scratch like this, this, this is a nail just dug into it a little bit more and pulled up. So it removes the upper layers of paint into the silver um, it's all pretty much just me doing this with my fingernail. There are some other things that I do. Did I do it on this helmet? Yeah, so this one here was done with a bit of sandpaper while the helmet is still wet. I'm trying to look for sandpaper, see if I have any here that I can kind of show you. Um, but you can do all kinds of, it doesn't have to be sandpaper. It doesn't have to be a tool. It can be whatever whatever you, you got laying around. So for instance, so something like this, I would take a piece of sandpaper, fold it in half, and then while the paint's still wet, kind of press it into the paint and just drag it over. So just quick drag, um, just like that. Ah, yeah, definitely check it out if you want to, uh, all the little Rip fingernails? Yeah, I mean, ah, uh, I just trimmed all my fingernails too, and just so that I wouldn't be loading them up with paint tonight. And I know I'm gonna be scrubbing the crap out of them later as soon as I'm done because I'm already, I'm already pretty, pretty grungy. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. And you can use anything. You can use uh, literally whatever you have laying around. Um, I've been even known to take one of these guys and my wife absolutely hates it when I steal her kitchen supplies, but <laughs> this blue sponge for cleaning your pots and pans and whatnot, or your, your dishes, this is all paint, by the way, it's not food. Um, it has a really interesting pattern on it. It's very greeny. It's very, uh, fract, uh, fractured. So it's not, it doesn't have the same pattern throughout it. And you can even take that while your paint is still kind of dry, you make sure that there's it's a fresh one so you're not getting a bunch of these uh, like little crumbs or something stuck in your paint. So while the paint is still wet, you can actually just dab, 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 dab in certain areas and it will it will go ahead and, uh, and add a little bit of texture in there. How many different layers of paint have you used on this helmet? So this helmet, um, it's, it's kind of like a force, what I consider a four stage. And I include the weathering as kind of like a fourth stage. But uh, so every helmet, I start out with a base coat of silver. I'll paint the entire helmet silver. So that way when I pull off um, little edges and stuff, I'll have these, this silver that shines through. But once the silver's on, then it's 
one layer, like I'll tape all this stuff and paint this whole thing white, and then I'll remove the paint. So the all the white is a second layer. And then if I'm doing color add-ons like this stripe here, that technically is a third layer. It goes over the top of the white. So when you remove the paint off of here, you scratch into it, it goes into the white and not all the way into the silver in most cases, unless you want it to. Then you can remove it all the way down to the silver, like the edge in here and all that. So technically up to before weathering, it's only three layers of paint. That's it. It's a silver, then it's the white, and then if you're adding um, extra colors or patterns on there, that would technically be a third layer. But then uh, the weathering is a whole other spiel. So for instance, earlier today, um, and I posted this on my, uh, my uh, page a little while ago, is I sprayed the whole helmet with um, a wash and I let it dry and I repeated that three times. So there's three layers of wash on here that I've wiped away in certain areas. Um, and then this just like build up layers of little grime and texture. So main body of paints, it's only three layers. And then everything else is just kind of a build up. So depending on how crazy grimy and gross you cr and cruddy you want to make these things, um, depends on how many layers you really want to put in there. But I say usually you just do it until you think it's done. Until you're like, okay, that's done. Then you can walk away with it uh, or walk away from it. I do say a good rule of thumb is to get to a point where you think you're done, walk away from it, go eat a snack, go do something, come back, look at it from across the room, um, stare at it for about 15, 20 minutes, and then go, okay, I can add bits and pieces here and there. So that way you can kind of go in and out and, uh, and, and add. This, I started painting this, <laughs> let's say it's, I laid down all the white in the, up until before I did the weathering, like a few days ago. And I just been staring at it in the corner ever since. Um, just trying to decide on how gnarly I wanted to make this thing or how dirty it's gotta be. Uh, Cause this is gonna be a relic version. So I wanna make it pretty grimy. Um, but it took me a few days of just staring at it to figure out if I wanted to go super heavy or super light, you know, back and forth. But yeah, it's really not a whole lot of actual painting. It's just a whole lot of like little, little stuff here and there. And it's really easy. A lot of people who get into this stuff think this is going to be like the most difficult thing. Um, and with a little practice, it's it's not at all. Like, there's nothing really difficult about the way I paint. Um, my wife always says that she couldn't draw a stick figure, uh, but I could teach her how to do this stuff. <laughs> so if she can do this stuff, anybody can do this stuff. Now, if you're trying to do a screen accurate, um, like Boba Fett, uh, setup or helmet or something like that. Yeah, I I couldn't help you. I couldn't even. I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. I could try, but there's so many layers. There's uh, layers on those helmets are a thousand times more than than here <laughs> than the stuff I do. Because uh, this is all pretty simple stuff. Uh, it just looks neat because it's the way it's leathered out or weathered out and textured. But like if you're doing screen accurate stuff with uh, some of those cosplays, those Boba Fett's, or even some of the clones, it is absolutely mind-blowing how much time and detail and layers go into that. Um, so I will never attempt that, <laughs> I don't think. Uh, maybe if I get really crazy one day, I'll attempt to do a jetpack or something, because I love jetpacks, but uh, I don't think... I'll ever do a screen accurate version of anything like that. Just too much work. I don't have the time for it. I wish I did. I'm gonna go back in these vents and do a little bit more black in there because I got a little heavy with the red, the rusty red. So you can tell where, where the vent stops and I wanna change that. I wanna make sure that you can, that it's kind of ambiguous. It kind of goes in there a bit more. Let's see. 
and I'll definitely post pictures of this thing once we're all finished up, but. And I try the best I can of explaining things. I'm not the best at it. I'm not very good at explaining things, but I try. That's a little better, a little darker. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do those vents too. There we go. Is anybody working on the a build right now? Any big projects going on? I feel like all I do lately are helmets. I haven't really worked on my kits all that much other than building a giant <laughs> a giant uh, mannequin for for one of my kits that I can't wear because my flight suit's too small. The mannequin build was pretty interesting. That was easy too. That saved me a ton of money. Build it yourself. And that way you don't have to pay somebody else for it. <laughs> Unless you don't have the time, then have somebody else make it for you. About to make my first kit out of Sintra. Ooh, good luck. Um, I've never messed with Sintra. I've, I'm assuming it's a lot like ABS, where you just got to heat things up and bend them and warp them and stuff. Um, and I've done a lot of that with, uh, with PVC. I've never worked with Sintra specifically. But I did learn um, that having a wet rag next to you while you're working on that stuff. Um, like let's say you get a nice crease in something and you want to keep that crease and you don't want to try and hold it down for X amount of time for it to cool. You just take that wet pa uh, paper towel and kind of run it over what you just heated up and it'll, it'll firm it up a lot quicker. So you don't have to sit there and hold on to it. If that's how Sintra works, I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Sintra expert or anything by any means. Um, but that's what I do with the PVC. Case in point, I made a st uh, the stand for my Jesse helmet out of some PVC uh, square tube that's used for uh, your drain pipes on the side of your house, your rain gutters. Um, and you just heat that up and you kind of twist it and contort it. And then you just cool it down by running, uh, wiping a wet paper towel over it and it and it holds really really quick so you don't have to sit there with a holding a hot pipe <laughs> in a specific place for it to cool down definitely have a rapid cooling agent there uh working when, when you're working with any hot plastic it helps <laughs> at least it helps me i don't know it might, it might not be how you're supposed to do a center i have no idea um but if it was pvc that's what i would do too so Little, little, little tips and tricks. Let's <laughs> call that uh, tips and tricks. I don't feel like, like again, like I said earlier, I really don't feel like anything that I'm telling people to do is new. Is is new things? I feel like most people have known about it for ages, but it just happens to be that um, nobody talks about it. Apparently, I'm gonna bring this down and get in there a little bit more. There we go, hold on. So I got this really gnarly, greasy, well, greasy or rusty little pit in here. And I wanna add a little bit more black just to pop that out and flatten the, the shine down a little bit more to make it read uh, rust corrosion a little better. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's looking a little better. Since I can't really get my finger in there, I'm just going to use the brush to kind of soften the edges a bit. And down here too. Zoop. There. That's looking grungy, grimy, and gross. Actually, the advice you give really helps us out. Oh! Well, there we go. Thanks, Star Wars wallpapers. 
Um, I I feel like I like to share on a, on a whole other level too because when I started doing my kit, there wasn't really anybody sharing with me. So I, I kind of had to sit there and, and look at this kit and it was intimidating. It really was like, I didn't even know where to start. So I practiced on some other things and I just used the knowledge that I have, uh, from going, from being in the world, as long as I've been in the world and worked the many jobs that I've done. So I take bits and pieces of jobs, uh, throughout my years and kind of apply them to painting like the, the, the tape ball and the, and the ripping of the edges. Um, that all came from when I used to paint houses. I found that out by accident when I was doing, uh, stucco work and we painted, uh, stucco, which is a Southwestern style, um, exterior and houses is very, very grainy, very gritty. It's like a sandy, uh, sandy side siding for your house. Um, in some places where you would have repair patches that they would put flat stucco over and they would just not have any texture. So you can, in order to cheat, you just take a ball of tape and you go along the flat texture to kind of mimic the, the broken, um, almost like this pattern throughout the stucco. So that's how I learned how to do the tape ball for, with paint is just doing stucco work way back in the day. Um, and the same thing with ripping edges. Because when you're painting houses or you're painting siding, whatever you're doing, you're painting your interiors of your house um, and you use that blue painter's tape, a lot of people don't know it's activated by water. So when you're painting and you don't dampen your edges, you'll get these blowouts um, or you'll get paint that'll dry to the tape and you peel it up and it rips chunks of your tape off. And that's terrible. When you're painting a house, that's terrible. So if you don't dampen your tape, and you want a rough line, then you do that here. So that's a, I figured, okay, I'll take that. If I want to beat up this line or if I want it to look all jagged, I won't dampen the tape edge and I'll just rip it off and it'll pull all that paint off in a weird, funky way. And that's how I started doing that stuff. Agreed. I've watched a lot of videos and nobody mentioned a quick set method. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense for doing certain things with that quick set. Um, but I don't know how Cincher works. So sometimes, and I will say sometimes, if you do the quick set and it rapid cools, it could it could warp or misshape. Um, so you don't wanna blast it with cold, cold water. Room temp water is usually okay. And you, you only want a damp, a damp paper towel. You don't want it dripping or super, super saturated. That way you can just kind of run it back and forth. Cause sometimes if you're holding something even if it's like on, over a form or an edge, so you have a really, really nice hard edge, if you cool it too fast, it can it can warp. So you gotta be really careful with that. What I would do is practice on some excess pieces here and there that you have left over from trimming or whatever, just to see how it works with the Sintra. And then kinda use that knowledge and, and run with it from there. So just don't go full, don't go full bore right out of the gate and then have it all warp and then yell at me later. <laughs> a little, a little uh, uh, CYA from from me to you. <laughs> All right, so here again, there's a little bit more weathering here than I want. So I'll go ahead and take my my little spongy again, my little magic erase, and just kind of lighten that up. And I don't know what these things are made out of, but they are magic. See, it brightens this whole edge up. Anything that's, this is the other thing with weathering. Anything that's touched a lot or has more uh, uh, things happening to it are always gonna be more beat up, but less weathered. So hypothetically, because this stuff is all raised and this stuff is recessed, all this area is going to get beaten up first or touched first or rubbed on things first. And all this stuff is going to kind of hypothetically be um, a little bit more grimy because like if you were to wipe from here down, you're going to miss this whole area here if you're just going straight down. Although I am weathering this whole lower edge a lot more is because I want it to look like it's been sitting in the mud or something. Um, so it's getting that rusty, rusty edge. But in... 
the same thing with up here. So if this wasn't sitting in the mud and it wasn't getting all rusted out, you would still have a thicker band of weathering here on both sides because of how this is. So this has a really, really heavy lip. It's almost like a, like a quarter inch, a quarter inch lip. So, so let's say this is a sword or what have you. If you get hit, it's gonna hit this and then it's gonna hit this, but it's not gonna hit anything in here. So you have that, that gap there. And that is how weathering and, and scratching and stuff is gonna work. So you're not really gonna have too much damage or any sort of like hardcore uh, paint chipping in these areas where you have an, a protrusion and a recess. So you wanna keep that in mind, but that'll also be where most of your grime and your, and your gunk will build up. So I have the gunk build up the whole thing and then I'll take my sponge and I'll lessen the weathering from about an inch or half an inch up just to kind of add to the effect that this is an untouched surface area so that nothing's really being able to wipe this. And that's also why I have the damage along the top of the head, the helmet here, because of the way it curves in here, this will get beat up more than any of this will. So like your edges and stuff, yeah, if you're hitting, hitting it on stuff or you're grabbing at it, It'll, it'll get some damage down here. If you're getting attacked, you know, you can, people trying to hit you in the neck or whatever, you'll have that damage here. Um, but not necessarily in here all that much because how curved in and recessed it is. So if you have a helmet and you're in a drop ship, um, so hypothetically any, anything, let's say you, your, your seat is here and you're getting in and out of it all the time. It's always hitting along the same, the same edge because that's naturally where we, hit stuff like on motorcycle helmets and everything it's always going to be right about here all the way around and then again because we have this huge protrusion here i kept a lot less of the hardcore damage away from this area here so even like our scratches here so there's hard scratches here that continue over here along that same plane but it doesn't actually touch anything in here so it, it hits here or hits here and continues through without touching. And I didn't add any over here because maybe this was glance was coming. So I, don't, I don't know, whatever the story is. But that's the theory that you want to keep when you're weathering stuff. I see a lot of people will do like the scratch. If you're doing a scratch here, they'll do it all the way to the edge here, all the way on top, and then all the way from there there. And there is nothing in the world or universe that will do that. Unless it cuts all the way through the entire piece, that doesn't happen. So keep that in mind when you're doing your weathering. It'll help things look more natural um, and more cohesive. I hope that helps any. <laughs> um, and with this particular helmet, I did a lot of a lot of paint ripping on all the edges because I felt like if this is was a metal helmet and it's getting thrown around or it's it's its joints are moving back and forth. If you look at things in in the wild or or uh, out and about like in the city or whatever, anything that's painted metal surface, it, usually their edges are pretty worn down all the way to the bare metal just from natural use or natural uh, occurrences. People putting their feet up on things or people lean it up, get stuff, you're dropping your helmet, you're throwing stuff around, it'll get that, that natural weathering kind of away from that. So take a look at things in, in nature or out and about. Like let's say you go into uh, a Starbucks or something, they have a paper towel roll sitting on the counter and you can tell that you know, it's been worn away down to the metal. That's kind of how that, that all kind of looks over time. Chain link fences are good. Uh, Electrical boxes are good for weathering look, uh, technique or, or not technique. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I, can't, God, I can't even. Uh, not a portfolio. No. Reference. Re weathering references. Sometimes I'll take pictures of stuff out and, out and about just to kind of post up and so you, people can see the different uh, way things are rusted or, or beat up in, out, out and about in the real world just to kind of help along with 
transitioning that to an actual part. So hopefully that helps. Sometimes people don't care. <laughs> I might be the only one that cares about that stuff. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think if I have anything else to do to this thing. I'm kind of liking it where it's at. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I might, uh, I might call that good on the weathering side of things. There, um, there is another thing that I can do, uh, that I might do to the, the Mando helmet, um, Din's helmet is if I'm weathering that one, I almost want to do the, the mud horn scene. So I'm going to take his helmet and I've, I actually have a, a, uh, sand that I've made. Um, it has parts of real earth. Um, it's parts of a tile, like grout, um, and some other bits and stuff in there. So that when you get it and you wet it and you mod podge it, it it's almost like cement. And I think I want to put that on Din's helmet. But at the same time, I'm going to spritz it with, uh, with rubbing alcohol. No, maybe not because it might hurt the sheen on the helmet. Um, water and uh, a really, really, really light black wash. Just a quick little mist. And what it'll do is have little water droplets form with a tiny, tiny bit of the, um, the wash in it. And when it dries it'll have these little tiny water droplet effect. So I might do that on this one to where it just looks like that or, or spatter. You can do the same thing with like a mud spatter. So let's say this helmet dropped into a, a, a mud puddle and it splashed up. So you take that same misting bottle with uh, your mix and you just spritz it upward and it'll give you a natural sp splatter pattern. And you can adjust the splatter pattern by like dobbing off you know, bits and pieces of the, the actual splatter. So I might do that with this one. I'm thinking it might need a little splatter somewhere. <laughs> I'm not sure. It might need a little splatter somewhere. Um, and that's just another little technique that, that uh, comes about from using the, um, the water bottle spritzer too. I don't know. What do you guys think? Think this one's good enough? can actually put a visor in it these things are really easy to make a visor for because they're cast any cast helmet um, from the same maker will have the same exact uh, visor pattern so you can just draw a pattern once and then have it for every single helmet and that's what I've done with these guys I have a little uh, visor pattern so I know I can just put it on top of visor material cut it out and it'll fit which is awesome to have so if you ever do helmets or you plan to do uh, a bunch of helmets, always save your patterns for your visors. It's going to help you out in the long run because um, you don't have to go back and like, ah, retape everything, retry and figure out how to, how to, uh, what size it is and all that. So definitely anytime you make a pattern for a visor, hold on to that, especially if you buy from the same maker over and over. Ben Ban, thanks for all the great information you give out. Always a pleasure to watch your art pieces on GI. Yeah. Greetings from Bulvaria. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, Ben Ben. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I try, I'll try and do as much as I can for as long as I can and give out as many tips as I can think of them. The problem is, is I won't think of a tip until I'm doing something and then I'm like, oh yeah, I could do this for that. And then I'll go ahead and post it. But <laughs> until then, I have all this random knowledge just packed into my brain that doesn't have any sort of exit until something like this comes up. And then it goes, oh yeah, you know what I can do with this? Case in point, like the spray bottle today. <laughs> Completely forgot about the spray bottle today until I actually saw my spray bottle sitting in my garage. And then I went, oh yeah, maybe I should let other people know that you can use that because they might not know. And it does such a good, cool job. I love the way it, okay, it just, has this nice modeled effect that you can't get from just dabbing. And you can do the dab after you spray it, and that'll give you a completely different look. In fact, you can do that half and half or do whatever um, and use that in conjunction with your uh, magic eraser. And you just have so much, so many 
options of weathering and so many different uh, patterns and, and where that, that can come from that, that it just, it's mind blowing. Just from a, a few simple tools. I just love that. It's, it's the simple things and you get such a, a good result. And in fact, in this, the relic helmets, um, I actually weather the visors as well. I don't leave them clean. So like this visor, I'm going to put rust along the edges of it, just like I did everything else, add a little black wash to it. Um, you can't really see out of it all that well when you put it on, if you're walking around with it in the house, uh, which this is going to be just a wall piece, not really for playing cosplay, unless somebody makes the armor for this, and then I'm going to build a whole kit, a night kit for this. That might be fun. But until then, <laughs> it's just going to have to, it's just going to have to be the helmets. And hang on the wall. So you don't need to look at the visor. <laughs> and the way I do my visors too, if I need to replace them, I can. So if it's too weathered and I can't really see out of it, I can pop it out and put a new one in, no problem. Especially since I already have my template. Easy peasy. <laughs> oh. So save your templates, uh, get some magic erasers and some spray bottles and some cheap brushes and some painter's tape. And that is, <laughs> and get your hands dirty. <laughs> don't, don't be ashamed. Dirty hands are a sign of, of clean, uh, clean work, if that makes sense. Let's see, ah, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the magic eraser one more time right in here, because I think I need to knock that down just a little bit more. So again, I'll get my magic eraser. Those that hadn't watched me do this a thousand times already. And it is kind of grungy. This thing's been through hell and back. And we'll just kind of knock some of this darkness down off of this guy. Bango bongo. Brightens that up. I would do that down here, but no. Mud puddle. Got to remember the mud puddle. And if... And that's the other beauty of this too, is if you do make it too bright in comparison to the rest of the helmet, just go back, mist it all again, let it dry, and then go back and start over. It's super easy. Again, just wipe off all the excess where you don't want it, and then uh, you're good to go again. So it's really easy to come back and forth with your, with your weathering methods, especially with this stuff. It's so easy. If you're using oil base, it's not going to be so easy. But acrylics are so forgiving um, and so malleable that uh, they help out immensely. So that's what I use. I only use acrylic. So in case everybody's asking. Oh, and I am going to try this stuff out. Um, I don't know where my testing spray thingy is, but I'm going to try this stuff out. Because I just got this. And it has this crackle effect, supposedly. So I think what I'm going to do is when I paint, I have another, I have one more clone knight. That's it. And then the, that'll be all the clone knights I do, I believe. But instead of doing the whole white paint, I'll paint the majority of it white, but then I'll use the crackle and paint like a panel of crackle on there. So when it cracks and, and does this effect, all the silver will show through and it'll look like the paint itself is aged so much that it's cracking apart. And I think that'll be really cool, uh, especially since like that happens a lot with like uh, with fire damage. With fire damage, you'll get this crackle kind of pattern with old paint because um, it'll just start drying out too much and crack apart, especially on a surface that's that's a metal surface. So I think that'll look really cool. I don't know how it's going to actually work <laughs> or if it'll work at all, but we're going to try it out. So I'll try that out and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Um, I did a bunch of testing for these metallic paints that I got as well, like the uh, these metallic colors that they just released. Um, and so far they look really cool, but they are not shiny. So I'm going to have to figure out what I did wrong with that. So like how shiny this stuff is and how reflective it is, it looks like that, but with a matte finish. So I don't know if you have to clear coat this stuff. Or I just didn't, if I sprayed it on too thick right away, I didn't shake it up enough. I don't know yet. But as soon as I figure it out, I'll show you guys what they look like. But the blue is amazing. 
that, uh, where is it? I don't even know where that blue went. There it is. This is probably my favorite. I want to do a helmet or, or armor in it of some kind. Metallic Caribbean. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> I really, really am excited to try and do this. And you, the metallics, they're in a different can. So this is the just a plain gold um, and this is the metallic. It has like a more co shiny copper can than a matte golden can. Um, so if you see these out at your your uh, local stores, you'll be able to tell them right out of the gate. And I snagged as many as I could uh, just because I wanted to try them out and show everybody. So we'll, as soon as we figure out how these work, I'll be able to tell you whether you want to buy them or not. But I don't know that yet. So I won't suggest them yet. Uh, there's also one other thing that I'm going to try um, that for weathering, on the, as far as the weathering aspect goes, is this, it's, it's marble effect, which looks like cobwebs almost. So that might be good for mud. Um, this is really red, so that might more look like blood spatter marble marble effect <laughs> so if you're doing a blood splatter that might be this might actually be really good um, but if this was brown if they make a brown or a uh, a rusty color that'd be really good for a mud splatter effect so we're gonna have to try these out too and see how these work out they're kind of cobwebby looking i don't know how well it's gonna work we'll see but uh if they do work and I can get a brown, this is going to be a game changer for a lot of um, relic kind of style stuff. And I, if I do find a brown, I might actually go back and, and do that as opposed to the spray bottle method, depending on how they work, because I don't know yet. We'll see. We shall see what they do. And also, the last thing I got, um, which I didn't need at all, but since Halloween's coming up, we have glow-in-the-dark paint now. I didn't know that. They also have a paint that calls holographic and one called glitter. Holographic looks like rainbows, like a metallic rainbow, which is kind of neat. So maybe I'll have to use that on something. I can guarantee it. I can find something to do that with. Maybe even like a scope, uh, a scope lens or something. You spray that stuff on there and it'd be good. Um, YouTube review series. Yes. Yes. I have, I painted, where the heck did it go? I, I just had... A whole thing that I did some test cut. That's how we figured out this color. We did a lot of test patterns. Where is it? I left it in here somewhere. No? Huh. Uh, I don't see it. I swear I had it. It just vanished. It's a huge box tube. How did I lose that? It might be outside. <laughs> it might be outside. But yeah, I'll definitely, uh, I'll do a live stream with testing all this stuff or showing the different um, n ways these things work. Uh, I really don't know if they work that well, but we're gonna try them. And I'll definitely do a, uh, a comparison and a uh, uh, review on it. Um, also, ha I have a bunch of stuff that I wanted to do. A long time ago, I wanted to do a helmet review or a uh, review on products themselves. Like anytime I got a 3D print or anything like that, I wanted to do a review on it. Um, but I did one and it just happened to be so, the prints were so bad that I felt like I was just badgering the print after for, like, for an hour. And I, I didn't necessarily want to do that again. So, so I potentially will do another series on that or I'll, I'll join somebody else's chat. Um, that's that's doing that and kind of give give my two cents. Everybody's got an opinion, and I try to I try to be very uh, honest and straightforward with things. Even even with stuff that I absolutely love, I'll make sure that everybody knows what my honest opinion is because it is the absolute worst to have somebody tell you that this thing is great and then you get it and it's absolute garbage. It's happened to me a few times. Let me tell you, I do not want to have anybody else go through that. Cause it sucks. So if I'm recommending something 
It's specifically because I've tried it or I've bought, purchased it a few of more than once and it's worked out the entire time. So I'll give honest reviews for anything and everything that I get. What's up, Dumble on Boy? How you doing, man? Are you back in Germany? How's Germany? Um, uh, yeah, so I'll try and I'll try and do so much of stuff. I really want to get another Mandalorian helmet, not a Mando Mando, but a Mandalorian helmet. Um, because I want to do a whole new kit. I want to do the uh, Death the Death Watch Troopers from the Mandalorian season one. Um, I really want to do that build. So I'm going to get one of those and I'm going to uh, do a, I'm going to try to figure out how, if I can, a start to stop paint tutorial. I don't know how to edit videos. I'm no good at any of that. So what I'm going to try and do is either time lapse it and then post it and that way or try to have somebody who knows about it uh, about doing video editing to help me out and, and piece that together so that way i can show a start to finish build as far as you know getting raw cast to this i want to show all the steps and i will say resin cast way less steps <laughs> i've never was a fan of resin cast helmets before um i, I did two of them and i absolutely hated them um uh, but then I got these ones from Alpha, and I've kind of come to love them because it's so much less work. It's just like this. This Here's the other one that I'm going to do, um, and I haven't figured out what design I'm going to do on this one yet. That's why I haven't even bothered with it. But besides cutting out the visor and giving it a coat of primer, uh, you really don't have much to do to these things. You really don't. You know, it's it's a lot faster. This the con the, the the pros and cons though. So I will say that three D printed helmets are lighter. Uh, they're cooler as far as temperature wise. Resin helmets will will keep the heat in there a lot more than a three D print will, and um, they're a lot three e D prints are a lot easier to wear. So these ones. Oh, and if you drop a three D print. It's not necessarily going to crack in half or break. Um, and if it does, it's super easy to fix. If these, if you drop a resin helmet and it cracks and breaks, it's going to be a nightmare to put back together because a lot of times they'll chip. So they have big chip marks. So you have to fill the chip marks. You have to fill the cracks. You got to put it all back together. It's kind of a hassle. And uh, resin doesn't, as far as I've come to know, resin isn't very forgiving. So a 3D print, you can <laughs> melt weld the whole back of it back together and just do a little sanding and, and, and paint and it's back to brand new. These things, if you drop and break these things, they're toast. <laughs> you gotta start over. So there are pros and cons to all, um, which is why I like wearing 3D printed kits more than, than anything else because they're lighter weight and they're more comfortable. Um, but these are so much nicer to like resin casts are so much nicer to paint and have as like show pieces because they're easy, they're quick and they hold up and they look good. And if you have them on a shelf and it's hot in your house, they're not going to melt <laughs> like 3d prints. will. if you leave a 3d print in the car or something for too long, it's going to melt. Done blonde boy. Yeah, back in Germany, about to be fall, so the weather's perfect. You lucky guy. You better start painting your kit, man. <laughs> you better start painting it. You've been sitting on that kit forever. I feel like it's been over a year. So get on it. Get on it. Um, but yeah, I think uh I think this is looking good for one of our our clone knight relics. Um my account started out as primarily only Mandalorian stuff, and now I think I have more Clone Wars, uh, more clones, and more bad batch stuff than I do anything else. So I'm going to try and get back into my Mando builds for sure. Uh, like right now, I have some plates sitting right next to me that are going to be next on the, on the paint block. And these are from Make or Bake 3D, and they're the uh, Mando's thigh plates. Oh, yeah, you're about to go out and get the spray. Okay, well, well, since you're here, so this is the chrome. 
This is my everything that I do the undercoats for. It is it's a silver chrome. Um, that's what I base coat all my helmets with. If you want that shiny uh, metallic, but if you want, they have another metallic. Hold on, where is it? Uh, it's kind of like a flat matte color, but it's silver, and it's this one's called silver matte. Um, which is also a metallic, but it almost looks a lot more like uh, like raw steel, not polished steel. So this one, if you want to do more of a raw kind of matte um, hammered steel look, get this one. But if you want to do more like the chrome shiny under like Beskar, then get that silver chrome. So if that's what you're going for, there's these two. Cheers. <laughs> so silver chrome or silver matte. But I go through this stuff like it's going out of style. I feel like anybody who on the island who uh, cosplays or paints and they use this stuff are always very upset because I'm always buying this stuff up. <laughs> always buying it out. Um, but anyway, so, the, so these are 3D print leg, um, the, the new leg armor from... Maker Baked, and they have these built-in strap holders now, which are super, super genius. And the print quality is just amazing. Like, I, you can't even see hardly these print lines. Like, I, like look at that. Look how smooth that is. It's like shiny already, and I haven't done anything to this. I haven't sanded these or anything. These are right out of the box. Look at that. And that's great. Let's see, I might snap both up. Got a spare, got some spare plates. I can test them both on. Yes, dude. Always test, 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 test before you paint. Um, so both these plates from Maker Bake 3D are almost ready to paint. I bet you I can just spray these with some, with a one or two coats of a filler primer and just go right to paint. I don't, I don't think I'll have to do any sanding on these whatsoever. Let me get to go. So stuff like that, Maker Baked. Um, so this is this is what I'm talking about. So normally when you get helmets and stuff, they look like this. Can I focus in on that? There we go. They look like this over the entire surface of the part. So 3D printing, it's a lot of this. Um, fortunately, on these plates, it's really only on the bottom. So everything else is really smooth and ready to go the whole surface area this is the bottom area so that way you're not really going to see it but this you just fill with some some spot filler and quick sand and it's done so same thing on both so all clean edges except for the very bottom and this is usually where the wraps are um for 3d printing is where they're the bottoms of them and they print up so yeah so 3D prints, and this is how thick they are. They're really thick, but they're still really lightweight. So really, really, really lightweight and ready to go. Almost as ready to go as that resin cast. Um, so if you get a good 3D print, um, now I want to say company, but people who, who make good, really good 3D products are hands down some of the best people on the planet <laughs> and you always want to treat them really really nice because they are always going to do right by you and make your life so much easier if you get really crappy 3d prints your life is going to be miserable and you're going to hate doing uh cosplay <laughs> that's just a fact and i have a whole video about that basically uh in my igtv so if you want to go look at that you can um but yeah so there we go resin versus 3d print paint tips paint tricks all that fun stuff if you guys uh have any questions or anything always always hit me up always hit me up send me a dm i'll answer any question you have i'll, I'll try to explain my methods as well as i can um and all that stuff and it doesn't matter if i've been asked a billion times i'll still go over it because it's always somebody coming in new or or anything like that cosplay maker 3d how do you make the small line scratches on your helmet thanks ah, so just like i said earlier um fingernails <laughs> that's it 
I'll, I'll go over this one more time before we before we, um, we cut out, is after I do my, my painting, while the, the paint is still kind of wet, it's still like tacky, I'll take my fingernail and I'll place it gently into the paint where I can just kind of feel it's in there and I'll press in and just drag really quick across, like quick lines. And I'll try and do them as parallel um, as, as possible for, you know, I try to pre-plan where I'm going with it, but sometimes I'll go back in and, and see these little jagged ones where it's like dotted, do, 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 like Morris code down the side of it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, that's when the paint was a little bit more dry and I took my nail and just kind of dragged it down and it skipped. My nail was skipping, but it has a nice little effect. But really, that's why my hands are always dirty. I paint with my hands. I paint with my nails. I'll, I'll beat things up, um, but this is all done with fingernails. Um, and like I said earlier, you can use really anything. You can use anything. I've even used uh, clothesline clips before. Actually, I think I used these. Um, there we go, on the yellow. So as a for instance, um, these little chunks taken out of the yellow part right here was was this. I just stuck it into the paint and chunk, chunk with the with just the edge of the, the wood. <laughs> so it's really whatever you can find laying around everyday objects that are just that you just kind of walk past and and you don't think to use for any sort of um, cosplay or weathering um, are usually the the things that are most perfect for for adding texture and damage because nobody thinks about it. Um, like sandpaper again so some of these lines were created by folding a piece of sandpaper in half and just sticking it in um, vertically just on the edge and just dragging it really quick and that's that's it that's it's it's simple stuff uh, fingernails clothesline hangers I mean you can use files you can go out and buy you know metal files and stuff and you can use that and and all that stuff if you want to and and you and I have but the odds are you have stuff laying around in your house even sticks like I hate to say this but if you don't have anything go outside find some sticks break some sticks in half um, even if I can reach I had a some random um, dowel rod and I broke it in half and it gives you this nice little point and this little edges, and they're, and it's really inconsistent. It has a little wood grain. You can lay that flat on a part and drag it across, and it'll have different scratches throughout the whole thing. Um, or you can even use the edge itself. If you don't want to get your hands dirty, just super easy. So really anything, and you can go out, get a stick off a tree, break it, and do the same thing. Or, or take it, if you have a big round object um, that has a bunch of like broken ends on it, you can take that end and kind of just jab it into the paint and it'll leave you with this really nice cool texture. Sometimes too simple to understand. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's just, you gotta take a minute and just look at what you got around you. And the, really anything becomes a tool. I think Adam Savage did a book that says, uh, uh, every tool's a hammer or something like that, or everything's a hammer. And he's not lying. And it goes the same thing with paint. You can do anything that you can you can grab around you can turn into some sort of texture, um, original texture pattern or original um, damage creator tool, really. <laughs> so anything anything you can find laying around, um, you can use. And I've used some weird stuff, edges of cups, edges of bowls, um, <laughs> just random fiddly bits here and there. Uh, like like how we were talking earlier is uh, magic erase sponges to remove weathering that you've done too much weathering. You can take that weathering off with with these guys, and not too many people think about that. Um, or maybe a lot of people think about it, and I just don't know who they are <laughs> or don't talk to those people that often. Uh, yeah, just anything, anything really. I mean, screws even. I have a whole bunch of little screws wood screws just over in a corner stuck in a piece of foam that you can pull out and you can use this for screwing into the bottom of 3d prints to use as a holder like you can like put them on a clothesline and you have a little like part holder so you can paint uh, or you can get a magnet and stick them to a uh, you know a piece of metal 
and an, that's another, another holder. Uh, but you can use these for damage as well. You can scratch into it. Like if I take this right now, because it's so sharp, I can still add some scratches here and there. Okay, and then if I fill that in with some black paint, those will really pop out. So you can use really anything you can find laying around. Any, everything's a tool when it comes to damage. Your work, it, your work looks amazing. Thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate it so much. I really do. I try and help as much as I can. So as I always say, if you have any questions, I put them on Magnus. Exactly. So here's my little setup. And let's see. Oh, they're all outside. Shoot. Hold on. Uh, where did it go? Get that over there. Hold on. I'm going to grab something real quick. My garage. Come on. Ooh, my garage. Uh, So the other thing that I do if I'm working on tabletop stuff is I have a bunch of these magnets. I got them off, off uh, Amazon. And I, if you get a socket set, they'll go right on top of your socket set. And then you can take your, your screw and it sits right on top. So you can have this just sitting with your part on top of it, especially if it's a smaller part. Just have it sitting on top and you can spray it because it's got a natural weighted base. Of course, if you use a shorter, fatter uh, socket, it's probably a little better, but I haven't had any problem with uh, 3D prints falling over with just these. Boom, just like that. <laughs> so there's little little tips and tricks and things that you can use all over the place. So you can A, use these with your close your clothes pins like that on a clothesline and paint your part. You can have a mag uh, magnet to a little base or even if you don't have sockets anything metal as long as you grab these little magnets and some screws you can stick them to your refrigerator if you wanted to <laughs> anything you want so you can get a little painting surface magnets are great for a lot of things and i tell people if you don't have little magnets in your house you're not really living <laughs> they make so many things just easy 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 i have them everywhere i have them on my phone case so my phone can stick uh to the refrigerator or something so i'm playing music through the bluetooth speaker or whatever i just walk by and mess with it or you know you can put it up when you're working uh, so you're not getting uh, paint on your stuff <laughs> all that stuff but uh there we go did a little painting oh and even like this like i went over this earlier too but uh sponges from your kitchen you get a pack of these for like a buck and they, the texture pattern that they have on, on the sponge themselves, as long as it's clean um, and you have like fresh paint, you can blot the, the surface, just hit the surface with this and it'll leave a really cool, unique pattern that's uneven and it won't be the same repeated pattern over and over and over. And if you rotate as you're blotting, it'll always have an inconsistent pattern. So it'll always look more, more natural. So even like this stuff, you can use for painting and I have and I do <laughs> boil and waxer versions of those helmets would re, uh, would be cool enough said amazing yes so originally I was gonna do a boil and a waxer but uh, what we decided to do especially with talking with um, the odd Viking or yes the odd Viking we went ahead and did the star core um, version because I wanted to do a uh, boil I think it's boil that has the the little twilight girl painted on the side this is not much space not much room here so it would be really really small and i don't think it would give it justice unless i did a lot higher up but i i think it would it's it would fit more here so you only have a couple inches there um so you wouldn't get much much of that detail but there are different versions of these helmets like alter geometry has a bunch of different versions he's of, of these types of helmets um, that from the art of Jake Bartok. So I might get a couple different versions of that and see what happens. So maybe I'll do a wax and boil because I really want to do those guys too. Anyway, all right, I'm going to go ahead and log off. It's been a, 
It's been, it's, <laughs> we've been on here for a minute and my battery's about to die. So I'm gonna let you guys go before I just disappear altogether. <laughs> But uh, like always, if you guys have any questions um, about anything that I do or if uh, you have tips and tricks that you might have that you want to throw my way, I'm always down for that. Uh, send me a DM, pop in, I don't care. I love when people interact back and forth. Um, so don't be a stranger. Uh, everybody have a good night and I hope to see you all again soon. I'll try and do this again this more this weekend if I can. Um, I do know that there's a live stream 24 hour a 24 hour live stream that somebody I forget who's doing it. I'm gonna have to post it. A thing for charity that I might pop on um, tonight or tomorrow in just to check out and and do a little donation. It's a for kids charity, so it's really good. Um, but we'll definitely be going back with uh, back and forth with that. But uh, thank you, yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Doodles. Um, thank you, Rexy Poo, uh, and uh, all man, everybody who came in. Um, I will see you guys later. Have a very good night or morning, depending on where you are in the in the world. Uh, aloha. Have a good evening and good night.